Welcome back to another video. We'll be discussing the stages of labor in this video in detail. Let's begin. Labor, also known as parturition, is defined as regular and painful uterine contractions that cause progressive dilation and effacement of the cervix, allowing the delivery of the fetus, and it ends with the delivery of the placenta. Normally, labor usually occurs after 37 weeks of gestation. Full-term labor occurs between 37 to 42 weeks of gestation. And premature labor occurs before 37 weeks of gestation. The process of labor is divided into three stages. The first stage is further divided into the latent phase and the active phase. During the latent phase, nerve impulses from the cervix are transmitted to the brain. This causes the brain to stimulate the posterior pituitary to release oxytocin. Oxytocin stimulates uterine contractions, which further push the baby towards the cervix. This creates a positive feedback loop known as the Ferguson's reflex, which is basically a neuroendocrine reflex in which the fetal distension of the cervix stimulates a series of neuroendocrine responses leading to oxytocin production. By the end of the latent phase, the cervix stretches and effaces to about 4 cm. Moving on to the active phase of the first stage of labor. The active phase begins around 4 cm cervical dilation and lasts till the cervix is fully dilated, that is 10 cm. The typical rate of cervical dilation is about 1 cm per hour in nulliparous women and about 2 cm per hour in multiparous women. The second stage of labor lasts from full cervical dilation to the delivery of the fetus or fetuses. Navigation of the fetal head through the maternal pelvis during the second stage of labor depends on the three P's. The first P is power, which refers to the forceful uterine contractions. The second P is passenger, which refers to the fetus. And the third P is passage, which refers to the route traveled through the bony pelvis. The factors determining how easy the passage will be for the fetus include fetal size, which refers to the size of the fetal head, fetal attitude, which refers to the way the fetal body is flexed. It is normally fully flexed, that is, the chin is on the chest, the back is rounded, and the arms and legs are flexed. Fetal lie, which refers to how the fetus is positioned in the uterus. The lie could be longitudinal, in which the fetal spine lies along the mother's spine. It could be oblique, in which the fetal spine is at an angle to the mother's spine. Or it could be transverse, in which the fetal spine is perpendicular to the mother's spine. The longitudinal lie is ideal. Fetal presentation refers to the first fetal part to descend into the pelvic inlet. The presentation could be breech, in which the knees or feet present first. It could be cephalic, in which the head presents first, or it could be a shoulder presentation. While we're discussing the second stage of labor, let's also take a look at the mechanism of labor. To make it through the birth canal, the fetus makes several positional changes referred to as the mechanism of labor. The first positional change is called descent, which basically refers to the downward movement of the fetus into the pelvic inlet. The degree of descent is called the fetal station, which is described in terms of the relationship of the presenting part of the fetus to the mother's ischial spines. The fetus moves from the pelvic inlet, which is at minus 5 station, to the ischial spines, which are at station 0. This position is called engagement. The descent of the fetal head is followed by flexion in which the fetal chin presses against the chest as it meets resistance from the pelvic floor. Flexion is followed by internal rotation of the fetal shoulders so that the widest part of the shoulders is in line with the widest part of the pelvic inlet. After the fetal head passes under the symphysis pubis at plus 4 station, extension occurs. The head then moves to about plus 5 station and emerges from the vagina. After the delivery of the head, there is restitution, where the head externally rotates so that the shoulders can pass through the pelvic outlet and under the symphysis pubis. 
After restitution comes expulsion, in which the anterior shoulder slips under the symphysis pubis, followed by the posterior shoulder, and finally, the rest of the body. This marks the end of the second stage of labor. Moving on to the third stage of labor, this is the time from the delivery of the fetus or fetuses till complete delivery of the placenta. The uterus contracts firmly and the placenta begins to separate from the uterine wall. The placenta is carefully removed to ensure that no placental remnants are left in the uterus. <laughs> 